Okay. So in this talk, I'm going to define the Hessian matrix, which is the correct notion of second derivative for a real valued function. So that just means a function with real outputs and with n inputs. There's multiple inputs, but a single output. Okay. First, I'll just say quickly what it is, and then I'll explain why it's the second derivative. Okay, so the Hessian matrix of F, denoted HF, is defined as the Jacobian matrix of the gradient vector of F. Okay, now why is that the correct notion of second derivative? Hmm? Well, what would it mean to say take the second derivative of F? So starting off with F has how many inputs, how many outputs? Okay, now if you have a function with just one output, then the correct notion of the derivative is just the gradient vector. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you differentiate, well, actually, you can also think of this derivative, the gradient vector, as just being the Jacobian of f. Because if you have a J Jacobian of a function with just one output, that's just a single row, and that's just a gradient vector. So the gradient vector, you can think of it if you want as jf. Okay, that's just a bad way of writing it, but it is the same as the Jacobian. Okay, so this has what? How many inputs does it have? How many outputs does it have? So it's a vector valued function taking vector values the same as in the input space. So you have n inputs and what's the dimension of the output space? N outputs. Okay. Now I want to differentiate again. Now this is a what? This is a vector valued function. So to differentiate it, what notion of derivative do I need? Jacobian. The Jacobian. So it'll have n inputs. Now how many outputs will it have? Well the outputs will be n cross n matrices. Okay. So outputs are n cross n matrices. Right? In general if you have n inputs and m outputs the outputs will be m cross n matrices. Okay, so the number of outputs cross number of inputs matrices, but here the numbers are the same. The outputs are n cross n square matrices. Okay, and so there's what you can think of as n square outputs if you're just thinking of them without the matrix structure. Okay, so now let's try to see what this matrix will look like in practice. Okay, let's begin. So what does NABLA F look like? Well, what are the coordinate functions of NABLA F? So what, what does NABLA F look like? Well, it's a function with n coordinates. Are we here? So NABLA F is what? It's the coordinates are what? The gradient vector. The coordinates are the what? So What's the word for them? The coordinates partial are the derivatives. partial derivatives. So f sub x1, f sub x2, so on till f sub xn. So far so good? Yeah. Okay. Now, in order to take the Jacobian, what do I need to do? Well, the Jacobian of this will be, well, what will it be? So it will be nabla of f sub x1. Nabla of what's the next one? Sub x two. And each of these is a row of length n, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, how would you actually calculate nabla of this? Well, if it does exist, you can also write it in another form, right? Are we here. So, what are the entries of nabla of something? Well, it, they are all the partials, right? Yeah. So, it's the partials of f sub x1 with respect to x1. So, it's f sub x1, x1. So, it's f sub x1, sub x1. Then, f sub x1, x2. f sub x1, xn. f sub x2, x1. f sub x2, x2. f sub x2, xn. So these are, these are the second order partials. Here. Now which of these are mixed partials, which are pure partials? Well, the 
the diagonal entries will all be pure second order partials and the off diagonal entries will be mixed second order partials so the the hessian is therefore so this is the hessian right we will be even so but this is the hessian now can we define the hessian this way well you mostly you you'll often find that the hessian is just defined like this okay this is a matrix of second order partials that's not quite technically correct at least if you want the hessian to have nice behavior because you could have a situation where what happens but what doesn't happen the the each of the entry of the this matrix this matrix is yes yeah but but the jacobian matrix doesn't yeah which could happen for two reasons it could happen because one of these one of the gradient vector itself doesn't exist okay or it could happen because for one of these entries of the gradient vector the gradient vector of that entry doesn't exist okay so you could have a problem with the first differentiation or the second okay which somehow doesn't affect this so so the hessian matrix wherever it exists it can be defined like this but you could have places where this is defined but the hessian matrix as defined like this doesn't exist okay now some people just define the hessian like this and then that's fine but but that definition of hessian is a little different and and you could have various situations where where that hessian exists and this one doesn't and the other problem with that is that if you try to define the hessian that way it won't have all the nice properties which you require of the hessian or which you use in the hessian to to deduce various facts mm -hmm. okay